Happy Friday, everyone. And of course, Friday means mail time. And if you're new to this channel, basically Friday is the day that I showcase your work. You might notice that my address is in the description of every video that I do, and people send me some amazing stuff. Got quite a stack of it this week. As usual, there's a lot of books and prints that I'm going to share with you today, and I often get asked, hey, Ted, where do I get my work made into a book, or where do I get my work printed? I have a resource for you, and this is probably a good time to mention our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at Adorama Picks. You probably already know that editing your images isn't the last step in the the process you want to get them printed and Adorama Pix offers an excellent service delivering beautiful prints and photo books. Just upload your image files, you control the output quality and finished product on an absolutely gorgeous selection of paper types. Prints are a way to separate you as a great photographer by going the extra mile and using photo books to wow clients. You can even expand the services that you can charge for and prints always look better than images on a screen. So check out Adorama Pix and see how beautiful your images can look. Use the offer code TED at 15 off at checkout and I can save you an additional 15% on your entire order. Once again, that offer code is TED15 off and I want to thank the folks at Adorama Picks for sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. So without further ado, let's get moving. <music> So first up is this package, which is from Hasselblad, and I kind of thought it might be a big telephoto lens. It's a little light for that though. Okay, this is cool. Let me show this to you guys. This is a poster. This is every Hasselblad ever made from the HK7 in 1941. And by the way, any variant of these super wides are my absolute favor. And then we go all the way up to the X1D and the H6. So I've actually seen this before. I did a workshop about a month ago with Hugh Brownstone and we used the Hasselblad space in New York City. And I made a comment to my friend Dan who works there that I really like this poster. It was up on the wall. And so he has sent me one for mail time. Thank you, Dan. This is awesome. Next up is this book. This comes to us from Rick Albertson, who writes, Dear Ted, I recently published the Enclosed Coffee Table book, Documentary Portraits, as a retrospective of the 15 years I spent as a freelance documentary photographer covering assignments in Asia, Africa, Central, and North America for large nonprofit religious organizations. The book features 50-plus black-and-white environmental portraits, each accompanied by a story behind the image what was taking place in the field and in my mind. The book was produced in conjunction with a gallery exhibition, Children in Need of Hope, for which there will be a book signing and open reception in Wrightwood, California on May 26th at 2 p.m. That was like three days ago. I'm really sorry, man. Anyway, he says, thanks for the hard work and many, many hours you spend serving the global photography community. Hope you enjoy the book. Rick, Rick, this book is beautiful. I hope your book signing went well and thanks for sharing. So this comes to us from Pierre Vrienne and this is a reproduction of a magazine that was produced over 100 years years ago by Alfred Stieglitz. This is very famous called Camera Work. You've probably heard of it. I don't think I've ever actually seen one of these. I've seen prints of photos that were in this magazine, but I've never actually seen the magazine. This is pretty awesome. He writes in here, Dear Mr. Forbes, I am writing to let you know of the completion of a project that I've been working on for over two years. It all started when a friend told me that he had wished he had an electronic version of camera work so he could admire its content without handling any of its very fragile and expensive original issues from its full set. I eagerly volunteered to help. It took countless hours of work both in the studio to photograph the pages and on the computer to put it all together. And in the end, I made PDF files for him and he was delighted with the result. I also decided to print it all and offer it for sale. And as mostly you know, Camera Work is an exceptional magazine. It is also extremely rare, fragile, and expensive in its original form. Most people or institutions that own copies are reluctant to have them manipulated too much. But one cannot study the history of photography without it being mentioned, and it's so rare that it's hard to see its content. I'm sending you a copy of issue number one with this letter for you to keep. I will also include a copy of the press release should you wish to know more about this. Please do not hesitate 
site or get in contact with me or go to my website. I will put a link in the show description if you want to get a copy. This is pretty amazing. It says, uh, for your information, I've sold complete sets of this facsimile publication of camera work to the Cleveland Museum of Art, National Library of Scotland, Museum of Modern Art in New York, Princeton University, the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, and all the big players here. So just to put this into a little bit of context, I've done videos on Alfred Stieglitz before. He was a very important figure in the history of photography. I've also done a bunch of videos on pictorialism. So I will link up to a playlist here if you're interested in learning more. But essentially, pictorialism is a very interesting movement early on in photography, where photographers were not only trying to get better at their skill and hone their craft, but they were also trying to get photography accepted as a legitimate art form. And when you have the introduction of photography, galleries and museums would shun it because it was this weird technical medium and it wasn't legit like painting or sculpture. And so a lot of this early movement dealt around this acceptance of photography as a legitimate medium of art. And it's really interesting, later on it fell out of fashion, was replaced by Ansel Adams and the whole group F64, and this whole notion of straight photography, which was a divorce from pictorialism. But it's a very interesting uh, segment in the history of photography. So I'll link up to some videos if you want to know more. Also look in the show description. Pierre, thanks for sending. This is absolutely amazing. So from pictorialism to modern minimalism, we have a little zine that comes to us from Albania, and this is from Olsi, who writes, Hi, Ted. We run a small independent audiovisual channel called Radio Blog Tirana. We started it with guest mixes and podcasts three years ago, and now we have a small internet radio, a place where we are doing events, and the last of them, we have a zine called Neptoic. I send you Dr. No Genesis, and it's a tribute for RB. The other numbers will be two, like an urban anthology. You've been my inspiration to start this scene, so thank you for all you do in the art of photography. We'll see. Thank you for the little zine. It's pretty awesome. So next up is a set of minimalist prints, and these come to us from Matt Canosa, who lives in Argentina, who wrote me a very long and very personal letter, which I'm not going to share the whole thing, but in here he talks about how this channel actually kind of inspired him to start producing the work that he's doing now and got him out of a pretty serious rut, and he's a big fan of John Free and wanted me to share uh, his inspiration with John next time I talk to him, which I will definitely do. These are really nice. These are these minimal prints. They're really beautiful. So excellent job, Matt, and thanks for sending me your work. This is 66 Hours, which comes to us from Steve, who lives in Wexford, Ireland, who writes, Hello, Ted. I hope this brief epistle finds you in fine fettle. I love that. Please accept the book accompanying this letter as a gift. There's no need to pop it into your Friday fight with parcels and that terrifying knife. Too late for that, buddy. I'm sure you have an enormous backlog of work to get through on that one. If you have time, grab a coffee and have a read of the poetic journalism from 1914 describing the incredible story. Thanks for the book. This is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, this is cool. This is a book that comes from Jeremy Adams, and I say that because I follow Jeremy on Twitter, and I've seen him do a lot of posting on this over the last year or two, and it's a project I know he's been working on a long time, and I pulled it out and I thought, a life well lived. This looks familiar, and sure enough, that's it. He writes, what's up, Ted? I hope this finds you well. I've sent a copy of my latest project, A Life Well Lived. The book is took nearly a year to put together. It is a photographic timeline of my grandmother's life through photos. It started out as me just collecting all the photos and film negatives of my grandmother's home to digitize before something happened to them. After months of work and nearly 4,500 images scanned, I began to realize how important this work was as a photographic representation of my family's history. I know this book is mostly a personal project that will probably only resonate with my family, but a project which I didn't even take a single photo, though I'm in quite a few. But I feel it may be a project that will encourage others 
others to seek out and save their own family's photographic history. Jeremy, don't apologize for this. This is outstanding. And I think that personal projects, sometimes we're behind the camera, sometimes we're curating, which is clearly what you're doing here. And I think these types of projects are very important, if not just for you and your family, but just in the grand scheme of things. Everybody's got a story and photographs tell that story. And I think this is absolutely gorgeous. So thank you for sharing this for me. This is amazing. So Jeremy, uh, I will put links to his stuff down in the show description below. Go check him out. He's a really cool guy. And I will put links to all the other awesome work in the show description as well. If you have something here that has moved you, leave a comment. I have a big mess to clean up. So I'll see you in the next video. Until then, later.